Mornings with Sue and Andy are brought to you by Cupboards Express. Stop by their showroom at 2020 32nd Avenue Northeast to browse over a thousand styles and get expert advice. Calgarians were called into action and we stepped up. Cutting water usage over the weekend in response to the ongoing water emergency happening right now in our city. But as we saw during the first week of water restrictions, we get complacent and water usage started trending up at times. What can we do to stay the course and not get complacent during this state of emergency? Joining us to discuss strategies to help with Calgarians' water conservation efforts is Dr. Tricia Stadnick, Professor and Canada Research Chair in Hydrologic Modeling at the Schulich School of Engineering at the University of Calgary. Good morning to you. Welcome to the program, Dr. Stadnick. Uh, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you. So it's interesting because yeah, we seem to get it. Yeah, there's been a couple of slips with our water usage as far as trying to keep that number down. But with another three to five weeks of restrictions, perhaps, what advice do you have for Calgarians to hold the line and, and keep usage low? Honestly, I'd love for us as a city to make it a challenge. Let's see how little water we can use. Like, how low can you go? kind of like the brown lawn challenge last summer during the drought that I called for (laughs) um, and that BC has done in the past. I think it's a great way to kind of make it fun, given that this is a situation we're stuck with. We've heard from the mayor and from people within the city that, you know, just the flushing of the toilet, if we lay off on that a little bit, that can make a big difference. How much difference does it make if we skip a flush? Yeah, it's a little bit shocking, right? And I think this has been one of the areas that even I, who knows a lot about water conservation, have been surprised in terms of how much water goes into a single flush and it's making me think twice, right? So you've heard the mayor call for if it's yellow, let it mellow. Uh, Reducing our flushes uh, by even one flush a day, if everyone in the city did that, we'd be at our 25% less usage threshold. No problem. Yeah, I know. That's how significant it is. And I think all of us could challenge ourselves to do it. Yeah, that's incredible. One less flush a day. Yeah. Super attainable, something to not do mm-hmm. in order to move yeah. the needle. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. What about some of the yeah. other uh, big users of water in the home? What what might surprise people? Where else can we you know, trim back that water use? Definitely. Well, I think it might surprise people also to know that washing your dishes by hand in the sink actually consumes more water than filling your dishwasher and running your dishwasher full. Uh, obviously, not advising running it empty <laughs> or partially empty. We really want to top up that dishwasher as much as possible. But dishwashers these days, particularly the newer appliances, are really quite water efficient. And that's the best and most efficient way to use your water. Unless you're doing what we're doing in our house. We went extreme and we have implemented our own gray water reuse system. So we actually are washing quite a bit by hand, but we're doing it camping style in little pans. And then we're store, keeping all that gray water after the dishes are washed and using it to flush our toilets. And so we're on a full-on flush ban in our house and only using buckets of water to flush. So, okay, how does that work then with the toilets? So you're using the gray water. Yeah. Are you, you're, uh, how, how does that work? Yeah, a lot of people don't even realize this, but the toilet is a brilliant invention. You don't actually have to flush it using the flusher. Uh, You can lift up the toilet seat and take a uh, volume of gray water, and it works really well if you can kind of get a good pour on. So you want to lift up that bucket, and you want to pour a bunch of water all at once into the bowl, and the toilet will flush itself. Well, it's just kind of one of those stock gaps. Yeah, enough water in there. I if know. Yeah, if you've ever my really kids just... have been absolutely fascinated by this, and so they're loving it. Oh, I bet. Quite fun in the house. Yeah. yeah, this is where I found, like for example, back when I had uh, you, my, my kids were babies, and you had the little uh, plastic tubs. I would pour that into the toilet, and it would flush out. I learned that the hard way. That exactly. yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so stuff. in our house, we actually we're, we're we switched to baths. Because when you uh, pour a bath, um, particularly with the kids, they flip a coin and decide who goes first. Uh, <laughs> and then we share the bath water and then we let it sit for four days and we draw that. We don't drain the bathtub. We leave the water there and we draw on that for the gray water for the flushing of the toilets. So we just keep filling buckets to flush the toilets with. Wow. You guys are really doing your part. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, make it a challenge. Make it fun. It doesn't need to be a bad thing. And so I've really challenged the kids to document their water usage. And they have these little check sheets at home and they're really taking to it. And as I said, it doesn't need to be arduous. We can actually use it as a gut check to see just how much our everyday lives depend on fresh water uh, and clean water and just how privileged and lucky we are to have it. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way to put us back in touch with that usage. Wow. 
And drawing a bit of a parallel, and by the way, speaking with Dr. Tricia Stadnick this morning, of course, a professor and Canada Research Chair in hydro, uh, Hydrologic Modeling at the Schulich School of Engineering, U of C. Um, uh, Tricia, it, it's interesting because we're, we've got a parallel here between the pandemic and this current crisis, but it, it's a crisis nevertheless. And I know that there's that push and pull between industry and business and uh, doing what we need to, to right the ship. And in this case, so busy, busy time of the year for tourist season. We're going to have maybe even hundreds of thousands of people visiting the city a month after month through the summer. And hotels and restaurants are going to be busier. So how do we address something like that with the increased business traffic and trying to keep those water use levels down? Yeah, that's a much trickier problem, right? Like, I, I feel like with the stampede, we can tackle the stampede grounds pretty easily by bringing in water trucks and, and sourcing water that way. But the challenge, the real hard part is going to be, what about the tourists that are staying in the hotels and depending on our restaurants? And so this is really where we're going to have to see some creative solutions from the service industry. Uh, and, and hopefully there can be some good advice provided by innovators within our city um, in order to help them do that. But there are small things that they can do that will add up, including just education. So for all those people coming into town, they may or may not be aware of the water crisis. We certainly, number one, need to focus on awareness. So they Mm -hmm. need to understand the water crunch that we're under. Um, And then, you know, within a hotel room, you can certainly, if it's yellow, let it mellow, you can reduce the number of flushes. Uh, Every little bit helps. And then do things like making sure that we're not changing the bed sheets and washing them every day and same with the towels in the hotel room. Like all of those measures will add up. Now, just to wrap things up, as we let's look ahead and think positively, as we get the water mains back online, we're back to full capacity. Is there a risk that the water pressure could create new issues as they open things up again and we get back online? So I think, you know, they're going to do due diligence on this one particular section of pipe for sure and make sure that as they repressurize this pipe that they're doing so in a safe and slow manner. Um, of course, we can't forget that they still have to flush this water main out. This is drinking water. It's a health and safety concern. And so, you know, we can't, it's been open to the atmosphere and <laughs> receiving rain and it's got soil and dirt in it. People have been standing in it. We have to flush that out to make sure that it's safe now and that it's clean. Um, this particular section of pipe, I'm confident that there's very little risk in because of the assessment. But of course, within our system, I think with this break has taught us is that you know our water supply isn't a hundred percent reliable it's not actually designed to be there's always a risk of failure with all infrastructure and of course we can still have uh, water main breaks and other things happen throughout the city great conversation thanks for your time trisha we appreciate it you're welcome thank you for having me dr trisha stadnick professor and canada research chair in hydrologic modeling at the schulich school of engineering university of calgary